Thursday test Friday, yeah. Okay. And my pointer in the wrong spot. If we get into it, it should be, we should be fresh our memories. So Rafuna said a very interesting Allah. It says, it says, let's say a woman had said uh, 300 in the Ksuba. So 200 of the 300 are the base Ksuba that Chazal and Chayev, and 100 was Toshmas. So the question was, we know that to the Ksuba, which means if a husband, if a man sold any Karkais after the Chiv of the Tzuba was already triggered, then she could go and collect from the Lechuchach. She can go to the Lechuchach and seize any properties that they purchased after her lien was already on those properties. The question is, when does her lien show up on the properties? For so Avunah said, you actually split it up. The Mana and Messiah, which is mandated by Chazal, and the mandate begins by the Aresin Min Aresin. Any cars that were sold after the date of her Aresin, she could seize from the Gulhas. But for Toysfis, anything over and above the bare minimum of the Ksuba, that we say that she would only start it by the Nasuin, and she could only seize properties that her husband might have sold after the Nasuin. That's what Rahuna said. And Abbas said, no. We, we look at the whole star as one, and anything, any properties that you can take are only properties that were sold after the Nisun. Any properties that someone purchased from this man before the Nisun would not be subject to Caesar, seizure from the wife who's coming to collect. So the Gemara challenged Ravuna, and we were sort of in the middle, so we should really start from here. When we Amar Ravuna, did Ravuna actually say, that on one star ksuba, you could split when the shibud started. But if we learned, what if she pulled out two ksubas? One ksuba said, he owes me 200 zuz, and the other ksuba said, he owes me 300 zuz. And Ravuna says, what should you do with these two ksubas? She has a choice of which star ksuba she wants to use. And therefore, Boston with voice Masayim, if she's content with just the Masayim, Goyve Mizman Rishon, then we'll let her seize properties even that were sold after the heirs. But Shalosh Meis, but if she wants to collect with the Shtar to Shalosh Meis, which is actually dated later, then Goyve Mizman Sheni. She can go for the larger payment. But the Shibut only starts from the time or the date on that second Tzuba, which was later than the date of the first Tzuba. The Misa, if you hold like Rav Huna, that the male Messiah of any Tzuba, whether or not the star is dated later or earlier, it doesn't matter, it automatically is Meshubit from the time of the Erisin, so then Tigbi Masayim Mizman Rishon. Let her take the star. Let her take the Ksuba. Let her execute this the Ksuba that says that he owes her 300 Zuz. 200 of those Zuz, according to Rabuna, we automatically say the Shibu already starts from the Shas Everson. And she'll only have to lose the Shibu for the last Mayo. So it makes sense just to execute the star that says Shalish Mayois because she has nothing to lose. The May on the Messiah, according to Rabuna, anyway, she can collect from the Shubadim from the time of theirs. Zok Rabuna Ulchemeich, you think, according to you, it's any better? Even if you hold it, you don't split a star and you don't say part of it is automatically Mukhli from theirs. You could have a different question. Take me Chamei Shmeyais Kulam. Why do we say she has only a choice between Ksuba A of 200 or Ksuba B of 300? Let her use both ksubas and let her collect them both. And we'll say one ksuba was the Messiah, the base ksuba, that you can collect from the Shas Ayerson. 
and say all three in the other ksuba are his toysus ksuba. So let it take Messiah is man rishon, and that will say was the base ksuba. And Klas will say is the toysus ksuba that her husband decided to add to the ksuba. Klas mayim is man sheni. And that for sure is not an option. is my time in So what's wrong with my argument that letter collect in both subas? The terror says that whenever someone is give Toysha Suba, he advertises. He doesn't just write a star. He says, I want you to know this that I'm about to write, that I'm giving you, is Toysha. And in this case, the star of Shalish Meis didn't say that. And therefore, given the cost of law, Savisi Vaisifilach. I actually decided to go over and above and to raise the amount of the ksuba to law to la smeya on Messiah 300 on top of the 200 that I've already given you in the first ksuba. This is what he means to say in the second star. So he's not trying to say I'm adding on because if he said I was adding on, he would have said that explicitly. So what does he mean? Why would he write a second star? Because he's giving her options. If you want the security of being able to collect, even from the Kuchos, from the Nesuin, from the Erisin, then Gavi Masai, then you should pick the star that says Masai. But if you like living life on the edge and you don't need the assurity of the, the lean from much earlier, then then you can take advantage and execute the ksuba that's three hundred years. So that's what you're going to have to say in order to understand why you don't take all five hundred. So you're going to ask me, even on the star that says three hundred, why don't we say automatically that the two hundred I can collect because of the automatic fear that the rebellion put on them by Ayerson, and only the one hundred she should have to be subject to a later shiba. You wouldn't say that because Hachanami, even for the star with the 300, Hainu Taima the Legovi, the reason why we say all 300 she'll have to collect from later and she won't be able to collect any part of it from an earlier Shibut is Midalai Kosovla, Isifis Lach Meya Amasayim. Since in the star it says 300, it just says 300. What it, sh- what it should have written is the Masayim is the base Ksuba. And I'm adding a hundred for the Taisha Suba. Since that's not what it says in this second star, it just says Suba 300, it means Achuli Achilta Lishabuda Kaba. Obviously, he's making you the same deal as we said earlier that if you want a 300, you have to agree not to have the Shibud from the Ayerson, but take the Shibud from the later date, from the time of the Nisur. So, we may obey in the star. It's clear that it's not being split where the Mona and Messiah, the Shiva starts earlier. Clearly, he made her a proposition. I'll give you 300 if you're willing to accept the Shiva from later. And therefore, it's not a cash on me. A regular Stark Shuba that's written properly that says 200 is the base Shuba, and I'm adding. An extra 100 for, for a total of 300. There, you in fact split it up. The base ksuba he, she can collect from before, and the part that was identified as a touch of suba she collects from later. But if there's nothing identifying it, they just written plain 300, that means he's giving her the option of getting more money if she's willing not to accept that cheap. You said the but, reason we, we don't take five, 500 is because he would advertise it, right? In other words, it would have it would have said in the ksuba of three hundred. It would have said this is an, this is toisvus ksuba. So, but when he adds on the second ksuba, he doesn't say it's toisvus. Does he write that in the second ksuba? No, that's for so that, the three that, no, for the three hundred. He didn't write that, and since he didn't uh, write that, it's can't be, you cannot look at it as toisvus ksuba. Why not? So, so how do you understand what what shot in this? Start, it says 300. It must be that he made a deal with her. I'll give you 200 day, backdated to the Ayrton, or I'll give you 300 if you're willing to accept the Shiva from even on the first 200. 
But he would advertise that also, wouldn't he? No, there he wouldn't. If he's asking her for a concession. He's adding he's, 100 more, though. Right. So that's the bait for her to make the concession of a later shibut. Mm -hmm. and we'll, we, we say that that's what it must be, because if it was just a standard toysvist, it would have been mentioned in the ksuba. Since it wasn't, there must be something more sinister going on, and he's trying to lure her into accepting a later date. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's see what the Gemara says. Omar Mar. We're going to drill down and we're going to analyze the the Brisa that we just learned. Or is it a Brisa? It is. Um, no, it's Ravuna. Ravuna said, "Iboi Bahai Govi, Iboi Bahai Govi." Ravuna said that she can collect with either tshuva that she wants, and each one has its advantages and disadvantages. The two hundred, the shibud is from earlier. The three hundred is the shibud is from later. Zog to Gemara from the fact that Ravuna gives her an option. He must be arguing on the halacha that we learned from Abnachman. The Amr Abnachman, Abnachman said, There's two stories that says the woman sold Shimon this and this property. One is written January 1st, and one is written February 1st. So the halacha is Beetle Shani Yisarisha. We only value the second star. And we ignore the first star, which means, which means that let's say I purchased this property with a price, meaning when I purchased this property, I was told and guaranteed by the seller that if someone comes along and takes it back because he claims it's owed to him, there's a lien on it to him from an earlier liability, from an earlier chayv, the moichir promises I will pay you back. So the, it was given with a chrys. The question is, the question is, is when did the guy come to collect? So if 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 I have if I have a chrys on the second star and not on the first star, we follow the date of the second star. So let's see what it says over here. So if you're actually even cause of a chrys, let's say. The Moicha said that if you lose this field, I'm going to pay you back. And in fact, one of the Balchoyevs of the Moicha came and took the field away from Lekach. He's only going to be able to collect from the second date on the star. Here too, name a Rishon Botolay, the Achel So let's see what it says over here. The second star, the later dated star, is what we're going to give validity to. So it's schwer, so it's schwer on what we said from Abuna. Because we said from Abuna, he can pick either star that he wants, either she can pick either Ksuba that she wants, either the later dated or the earlier dated. But here we see that you always follow the later dated star. So it must be that Ravuna argued with Nachman. Ravuna holds you can pick either one you want. Rav Nachman holds it's always the second star that we say takes precedence. Zok Tumor, that's not correct at all. Love me itmer Allah. Did we not have clarity to the Allah of Rav Nachman? And what was it? Omar Papa Umoidir Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman would agree that sometimes you could give validity to first star. When is that? The Isaac Badikla Latois's custom. If you have two stars on the same property, yes, the second star is the valid one. But what if in the second star there's an addition? Not only is it the property, but it's one extra item included in the deal. So then we'll say Latois's custom. It's not undoing the validity of the first star. He wrote the second star because he wanted to add to it this additional item. So once you know that if there's a good reason why the second star is written, and it's not identical to the first star, even if Nachman agrees that the second star and the first star retain their validity, Hachanami, so too in our case, where the first tuba was 200 and the second tuba was 300, he's giving her an extra 100. 
So therefore you could say that both of the tshubas are good and therefore she has a choice which one she wants to execute. Okay, Gufa. Omer Rab Nachman. Rab Nachman said, Shnei shtaris hayoitzin bazach hazeh vitel shen yeser nisham. The second star has validity, the first one does not. Omer Rab Papa, Rab Papa said, Umoidu Rab Nachman, Rab Nachman will agree, the yoitzin vodikla letois viskosva. If the second star has some additional item in it, you don't say that the first star wasn't good. You say really the first star was the mechira on the karka. The second star repeated that re- record of the mechira, but it's only because it wants to record the extra item that was included. Period. Now the Gemara is going to build upon the knowledge that we have. Pshita, it would be obvious if the ter- two stars, Rishon Bemecher, the first star says that on January the 1st, Reuben sold Shimon this property, the Sheni Bematana. And the second star says that Reuben didn't sell the property to Shimon, Reuben gifted the property to Shimon. That's considered it's two separate stars. In other words, we don't say it's like it's two stars with where Rab Nachman holds, you only look at the second star. Because here the two stars were different. One was Mecher, one was Matana. Why would someone do that? The Yafis Koichai, who the Kosovoi, should deal the bar matzah. We know that Lacha is that when you sell a property, who has first claim to buy the property? The immediate neighbors. Well, imagine if Reuben sold his property to Shimon, and Shimon was not from the immediate neighbors. And now they're concerned that the immediate neighbors are going to come and complain that how could you sell this property to a foreigner? You, you would have had to sell it to us. So what he did was he wrote a star matana. You're allowed to give your property as a gift to anybody you want, not only to your neighbor. So he wrote him a star matana because if they would claim against him, he had no right to buy it. They were the immediate neighbors. He can show that it was a matana. The chalshikain, and surely if it's rishim be matana, the sheni be mecher, and surely if the first star was a star matana, and the second was a star mecher, if I give somebody a matana and one of my bailechayv take it away, there's no chayis on the matana. But if I sold something to him, well, then in fact, if a bailechayv takes it away, he can come back and claim to the owner. So both of these differences make sense to have been done, and therefore you don't say by default it's the second star that was mevatel the first star. El ishneim b'mecher. Or Shneim Bimatana, that's where Rab Nachman said, Bitel Sheni Esarisha. My time, so why is it that if there's two stars written, we say that it questions the validity of the first star, and we can only focus on the second star? Rafam Omar, Emir Idea Idila. Rafam says maybe the reason why the second star was written is because the first star, the buyer, agreed that it was a star Mazuya. He said it was a star mezuyev, and that's why a second star was written, which would be a valid star. So, the, so basically, what Rafam is saying is the only way to explain someone duplicating writing a second star at a later date is if there was some problem that had arisen with the validity of the first star, such as the buyer who's holding the star admitted that the star is a forgery. Rabach Omar, the reason why we ignore the first star is not because we think there was some thing wrong done. But Amor Achule Achle Lishibude will say that he was Moichel the Shibur of the star. And since he was Moichel the Shibur of the star, they had to write a new star in order to reactivate the Shibur. But once again, since he was Moichel the Shibur of the first star, we can no longer give validity to the first star because that Shibur is not really there because he was Moichel. My way now, what's the difference if the Chashash is wrongdoing? In the first star, and that it's Mizuyev, or if it's merely a Shash that there's no Shibut from the first star because he was Machu. So tomorrow, Difference number one is do you look at the Aiden that signed as crooks? According to Raphram, he's saying that the star was a f- fake star. There's still Aiden signing on it. So that would cast a suspicion on the Aiden for having signed on the false star. 
But on the tzad that he's only moichel the shibud, well then the star was perfectly legitimate, and the adam signed it legitimately, but the buyer happened to have been moichel. So that's one difference between two shot. The other one was loslume peri. Did this field actually belong to the lakeach during this time? If the original star was a fraud, well then in fact it never belonged to the lakeach. So if he had eaten Paris of the field during that time in between the dates of the two stars, he would have to pay back the value of those pairs to the seller because the property was not his yet because the original star was a fraud. But if the original star was valid, he was just Michael the Shibut, well, then it was his field in between those two stars. And any pairs that the Lakeach ate were his fair and square. And the third difference is Lotaska. Who pays taxes for this property during the in-between time? If the first star was valid, well, then, of course, the Lakeach would have had to pay those taxes. But if the star wasn't valid, then it would be the Moach who pays the taxes. My have a the tshuva. What was the Maskana? We had a Machloik, between Rav Huna and, I believe, Rav Acha. What happens to the tshuva? Rav Huna says you split it. And I believe it was Rav Acha said that you always go boss or basi and basi said echadjab, echadjab, and school. so tashma don't might be done with shmuel mishom belaz of rapshim mother masayim mina erisin the ties this with an assume and that's what observer said that's what the huna said the hummer on the kabasi echadjab, echadjab, and soon the hill has and how do we pass him echadjab, echadjab, and soon the shibut for the karkoyas from Aksuba begins from the time of the Nesuin, not from the time of theirs. So I just want to backtrack a little bit. It's very, very difficult to understand. The Gemara said that if there are two stars written, but the first star was a star Mecher, and the second star was a star Matana, we don't say either one is invalid. Rather, we say that the Moicher issued a star Matana later after the star Mechira. Why? Because just in case there's a Tviya of a Bar Metzra, he could neutralize it with the Shtar Matana. Isn't that being crooked? Isn't that cheating? It was a sale. It wasn't a Mecha. It wasn't a Matana. So why, why is it not subject to Dina Bermetsa? You're going to let, you're going you're gonna to suggest that this is legit, that you lie and you say you pull out a, you pull out a fake star and you say it was really a Matana? How does that work? So I don't have a good terrorist to it, but let's see Taifas. We should Dina the Bermetsa. When he's when he's when he's approached, hey, we're by Metro, we get to buy it first. He'll say, I didn't buy it. He won't even disclose that he bought it. He'll just show them the star that says that he got it as a gift. The Amir Ashnayam, if the neighbor see both stories, well then is bought Dina the Barmetra. Then they'll have it enough Dina Bermetra. The Afilum Atana Shakazadba Akhrayis. Is Even a star matana that there's a chrayis on it, there'll be a din of bar So if he shows the star of mechira, and the reason why the star mechira is there because he wants a chrayis, even if he tells them it was a matana, there'll still be a din of bar How does that work? The nearest of Tosis, the imalakech atzmoi metzrim, it's speaking in the case where the lakech himself was one of the immediate neighbors. So the Shaykh Dina Bermetra, there there would not there would not be a claim of Bermetra. The Beatle Sheni is a Rishon. There you'll say that the second star would be Mavatl the first star because there was no reason for it to have it. But it's still a little bit difficult. It's still a little bit difficult that Toysus is suggesting that Vietznia, which sounds like it's not so honest. The yes, well, but, but but the very fact that he that he sold it to the person that ended up buying it. It's clear that he didn't want to put it on the general market. He wanted that person to have it. If he wanted a fair price, he would have offered it to. to but isn't United. that precisely what Dina de Bermetra is? Is if you're selling a property, you don't have the option to to say, "I want to sell it to a person who's not a neighbor." You're mechuyev to sell it to your neighbor first. But if, but this is but, so. Why are you allowed to give it as a matana? Uh, because, because then I'm then then I want to give a gift. 
if I'm yeah, selling so this, this is a cross. Is. This is a cross between a gift and a sale because he could have gotten a better price had he put it on MLS and told the neighbors that they had the option to buy it. So that's, that's what the Rishonim talk about, that it's not, it's not a complete checker because I would have given it to Manzana. Let's say you could say, listen, even if you would have insisted on buying it, well, then I would have been willing to give this guy Matan anyway. So obviously I wanted him to have it. And I would have been willing to go as far as giving it to him Matan. Therefore, even though he paid me a little bit for it, it's still not subject to the rules of Dini Debra Messer. So that, and that's what others learn. But then he can pull both out and he doesn't have to hide. The problem is with Toysus who says, don't show him the Mecher. Just show him the Matana. That sounds like Toysus is saying that really it's a Mecher. And therefore he better not show it to them. So that sounds like he's doing something that's not early. But according to other shows, you, you put both out and basically you're showing them that he would have given it to be Matana because he really wanted me to have it so it's not subject to these different so that's exactly what the question is. Okay, Zach, as a matter of fact, when I, when I, when I heard the other showing him, I didn't understand what they meant. Now that you're asking this kasha, that I wanted him to have it. So now I hopped what they meant, why, why you can use the star to circumvent the dinner metro, because the seller is saying, I really wanted this guy to have it. Yes, he paid me, but I would have given it to him anyway. So therefore, it's, it's not something to remember. It's clear that he wanted him to have it, or else he would have put it on the market, in general market. That's right. Once again, we're changing subjects and we're learning a new law. The law is a naira hamurasa, a naira hamurasa, who is mezana. She's chayiv skila, and not only do they do skila, it's such a horrible thing when a woman is a naira hamurasa that. They don't just um, do skila, they do skila right in front of her family's house to demonstrate, look at the type of children that this family raised. But what if there's a, this accusation against her that she was Mizana was false? Her husband is making up a story about her. Then, in fact, then, in fact, he has to give her a class. So let's have a quick look at the Torah. ish isha the some law and he made up a story about her that so the father and the mother of this girl have to prove that she's innocent that she was not Mizana. and they say that he made it up he didn't like her and therefore he made it up this husband and I'll prove to you that she's a psula First, we similar. They open up and show everything. So, what happens if someone falsely uh, defames his wife? The local zikne here ish ish. The zikne take this man. The yisroi. So he gets malchus. Not only does he get malchus for spreading a bad lie about his wife, the anshuai so may kasef. He also has to pay a knas of a hundred kasef la via naira to the father. Why? But what if it was not a false accusation? What if it was proven, in fact, that she was a Naira Hamurasa that was Mizana after Erisin? Well, then then she gets Skila. Where? In front of the Pesach Beisavia. Why? She did a horrible thing in Israel. So if she is innocent, then he gets Malchus, he gets Malchus, and he pays a knas. If she's guilty, she gets Skilo. But the key word is, he heard to Shema, al Basulas Yisrael. We're talking about a Basulas Yisrael. This is all talking about a Basulas Yisrael. So therefore, the Mishnah says, what if this girl was not a Basulas Yisrael? What if a Giyarish in Iskaira beat a A woman was Megayar, and she had a daughter who was Megayar together with her. Even if she was Megayer when she was less than three years old, so we know that this girl is a Basula, and when she was a Naira Hamaru Rasa, the Zinsa, she was Mazana, she does not get Skila. Harezu Bechenek. She gets Chenek, which is the regular punishment for a woman who's Mazana when she's married. 
not a special increased penalty that a Naira Hamurasa gets, which is a skiva. And Ain Lo Loy Pesach Besaf. And this misa that you'll get bechenek for being mezana does not have to be done in front of the father's household. And if she's right and he's wrong, and it was Moshe Shemra, this Giyaris would not be entitled to the Maya Sela of Knas. What about What if this child was born after her mother was Megayar already? Although she was conceived before her mother was Megayar, well, then I raise you Biskilo. Then she is considered a Bas Israel. And if she's Mizana as a Naira Marosa, she'll get Skilo. But she's not completely like a Bas Israel. And therefore, we don't do the Skilo in front of her family's household. And Veloy Maya Sela. And if she's defamed, then she doesn't get the Knas of 100 Sela. What about Hosei Rosa Veleidosa Betusha? What if she was conceived after her mother became Jewish? Well, then Now she's a that's a regular Bas Yisrael. and therefore, and therefore she gets knas and she gets skila, and it's in front of her family's house. What about a woman who yesh la'av ve'inla pesach pesach? What if her father didn't own a house? So although she has a father, but they didn't have a house, or yesh la pesach pesach, or the family has a house, but the ein la'av the rechman son she doesn't have a father. Well, then, Harezu Beskilo. Ah, you can't do the Pesach Beisav, and maybe they're linked to each other. It's an avid mitzvah that she should get her skilo by Pesach Beisav. But that doesn't mean that Pesach Beisav is a condition of this parish. Meaning, the Chi of Skilo for a Nairam Arasa, who's Mazana Tachas Bailo, is Beskilo, whether or not they'll be able to also. Do this in front of the family's household. Don't you need a cliff or a skila? Um, it was a two-story building that they would push her up. They threw her off the built. They threw her off a building. Yeah, the Gemara in Sanhedrin t- tells us that they, it would be uh, a, a platform that was the height of the two times the height of a person, so it's even less than two stories, hmm. and that they would push them off them like that. So it wasn't like that, like the Scarborough Bluffs. It was like the Niagara Escarpment. There was, oh, you know, recently there was a story about a pregnant mother in her 20s that slipped off a cliff from a lady and she fell 50 feet. Right. Happened maybe a month ago. And she was unscathed. Yeah. 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 It was, you know, I, I, she actually put out uh, an audio. Of, That's right. I heard the audio. It's pretty fascinating. It was fascinating. I mean, no, Hanamili, she didn't hold the dog. Sure, that's right. I mean, no, Hanamili. So, how do we know this halacha that Shoy Rosha Shaloi Bikdusha, Lay Dosa Bikdusha? How do we know that she gets skila? Omar Rishlokish, Rishlokish said, the Omar Kra Umesa. It's funny, it says at the end, if she did something wrong, it says, Usukulua Avni Yer Vavanim Vamesa, and she has to die. Is that. If the Torah says she gets skila, the Torah has to say also Vamesa, where she's dying, she's getting skila. So Vamesa is an extra word. The way I'm learning, the way I touch this is not how the Meshachachma learns. Because the Meshachachma asks, in many other places, when it talks about someone getting punished by death, it also says Umes. So, so the Meshachachma has a different understanding of this Gemara of what the Rai is from. Because don't remember what it was. Zog to Gemara, if you're going to tell me, if you're going to tell me that she's considered the Basis role because Umeza says that she gets the skila, well, then Iachi Milka Nami Lilti, Nami So then, if she was wrong and her husband was right, and, uh, I'm sorry, if she was wrong and her husband lied, and in fact she was a Basula, well, then why isn't he subject to the rules about him, where he has to get Malchus for defaming her and he has to pay a class of Maya? Why doesn't that apply? It's the Misa and the Srapsa below the Knas. The Vemesa just adds that she will also be Mekuyev Skila, this woman who was a Rasa Shalai Bektusha, Ledasa Bektusha. But the other halachas regarding this subject do not apply to her. In fact, who said Vemesa is coming to add a girl who was conceived Shalai Bektusha, Ledasa Bektusha? 
Maybe the Mace is saying that a Giyaris who has a child is also subject to these rules. For that, I don't need a puzzle. We don't care if a woman's a Giyaris. If her child was conceived and born after she was Jewish, that's a regular basis royal. I don't need any puzzle to be married. Okay, let's go to the other extreme. Maybe from the Mesa, you see that even if she was born and born as a goy and became a Giyaris, maybe even there she has a chiv skila if she's Mazana. It does say that she also developed by Yisrael. So clearly, Yisrael is coming to exclude a certain type of girl. So it's logical to say. That it's excluding a girl who was born Shalai Bekdusha. But a girl who was born Bekdusha of a Mesa will say is included in the Chiv the, the What if there's a girl who's a Yisayma and she gets married and her husband defames her and says she was a Balula? Potter, there's no Chiv Knas. There's no Chiv Knas. Shenemar, the Nosnu La Avi Hanaira. In the parish of Knas, it says the Knas is given to the father of the Naira. Obviously, there has to be a father, Pratazu Sha'inlaav. So that is a Vyasa Bachanin's Allah that a Yisayma does not get Knas. What do you mean? But it says Lavi Naira. Right. No, I'm saying that we just said at the end of the mission, we said that. Um, when they're a Pesach, 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 that's Pesach, Pesach. If you count the Pesach, Pesach, it doesn't, it's not my mind from the school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so you're saying maybe okay, not. I'm, uh, I'm saying she's a mother, brother. I hear. They don't do it. So I, I hear. So you see, for here, like after the Knas, it is Mark. Very good, very good point. Most of Rabbi Yoshi Bar Avon, we tell me Rabbi Yoshi Bar Zvita. This is referring to Ma'amis. It says, Vimoyin, Yumoyin, Avia, if the father doesn't want to allow. This man to marry his daughter who was violated. And we learn from Yemayin, Le Rabbis Yisoyim Knas, that even a Yisoyim gets a Knas. Rashi actually tells us that that's not really what you learn. What you really learn from Yemayin on Yavia, Le Rabbis Yisoyim Knas, is to tell you that even if the father lets her marry this man, but she herself refuses to marry this man, but she's not a Yisoyim, there, there she has a right to she has a right to um refuse to marry this guy but rashi says what we're learning from here is you see just because it says a via it doesn't automatically exclude a assignment where do you say that you a yusoyma will get knas where will you say yusoyma will get knas that's if it was he was first ball out so that means when the violation occurred she was in fact not a yasima and then she became a yasima there he agrees that you get nas but if the bia happened when she was a yasima then there would be no in knas and therefore it's not schwer that by moichi shemra on the yasima there's no in knas rav amar chayef rav says no if someone's moichi shemra on the yasima of course he's chayef knas Mimai, how do you know? We did tell the Ami, Ami learned the Brisa, Besulas Yisrael, Veloy Besulas Geirim. We have a, a halacha that who gets Knas, Besula Bas Yisrael, but not a Besula Geirim. Zot, so let's think we know that a girl who's a Geir has no father because it's Kikat and Shinoiladam. Yet the Torah needs to tell us that a Besula Geirim doesn't get Knas. If you hold a Yisoyma, a girl who doesn't have a father who's Jewish, gets a Knas, that's why I need a Pasuk to say that Geirim don't get Knas. If you're going to claim that no Yisoyma gets Knas, well then every Bas Nochrim, by definition, is a Yisoyma. Because she's Kekad and Shanaud on Has to be Yisrael Potter, the Geirim, boy. So the fact that the Torah had to tell you a Limut, that a bas geirim doesn't get knas is proof positive that a yisayma, the mere fact that she doesn't have a father, is not an issue. That a yisayma gets knas. Omer Shlokish, 
What if someone's Moiti Shema Aktana? He married a girl who's still Aktana and he said she doesn't have Besula. Potter, there will be Potter from the class. Shenemar Venosnu Lavi and Naira. And it says Naira with a hey, Mole Akosif, Mole Dibar Akosif. And we had this Gemara before that Naira with a hey indicates that she's an adult, and Naira without a hey would even include Aktana. Are you telling me the only way we know that Kanas is only given if the girl's a Naira and not a Tana is because that hey? We know it besides that, as we learned earlier. Hanaira with the hey at the end. Are you telling me if you didn't say the Muslim Lavi Naira, I would have had a half a minute to say that this parasha of Moishi Shemra is referring to Tana? It can't be referring to Tana. The, the woman that we're talking about, that the Torah says you get knas, if in fact she's a Baula, then she gets Kila. So it has to be <clears throat> without any extra haze, just from the text, from the context, it's clear that we're speaking about a Naira. Naira. So what we're what what really what Rebbe meant to say was you're right. Minayubei from the context of the parsha we know we're speaking about a, an adult, and he uses the word naira with a hey when it talks about the naira in this parsha that we know has to be an adult because she gets skila. So we dash nalakan naira here it means an adult when there's a hey on the on the naira. Hakol moka im shenema naira. But where it says Naira in other parshias and it doesn't have a hey, a filuk tana b'mashma, even if tana is b'mashma, and therefore he learns that if someone's ma'anis ektana, he also has to pay knas. This was the makar of the shita who holds that if someone is ma'anis ektana, he has to pay knas because there it says Naira without a hey. Um, Tani Shilo, Shilo learned shalosh midos b'naira. There's three. Differences, three different occurrences that could happen with a Naira Hamaros. Number one, Bola Adam Beves Chamel Shazinsa Beves After the Nisuin, the husband has relations with her and sees that she was a Baula. So Adam, so he seeks out Adam. He knows something went wrong here. So he seeks out Adam and he founds Adam that tells us that when was she uh, Mizana? She was Mizana before the Nisuin. Which was when she was still living by her parents. So that is the classic case of Moshi Shemra that our Pasuk discusses. That if it turns out that it was not Moshi Shemra and that she was guilty, then she gets skila by the door of his father of her father's household. And Dr. Gemara Cycle Nisa, this is the textbook case. She was Mizana when she was in Arusa, when she was still in her father's household. Cycle Nisa Al Pesach by Sevilla. Why? Look at this girl, how you raised her, that she was Mazana when she was in Arusa. What about Bo Lo Adem? What if Adem already came before the Nisuan, even before her husband was able to make an accusation against her? Adem came and said that she was Mazana now as an Arusa. So then cycle Noisa, she gets Skila, but only Al Pesach. Shar Ha'ir, not in front of her father's household. It's a regular Naira Marosa who gets Skila, but since it was discovered before she was Nasua, it doesn't fit the tight parameters of the Parsha, and therefore the Skila does not occur in front of her father's house. What about Sorcha Ule Besoifbog? What if what happened was, is she was Mizana as an Arusa, which she was still only a Naira, but she wasn't caught, the Adam didn't come until she was already a bigress. So then Tida and Bechen. Then she's not even subject to the rules of Anai Marasa, because since we only caught her, the Adam only came after she was already no longer a Naira, then she, the Misa that she gets is the Misa of a Baikris. Zakrimara, remember the Khalhecha, the Ishtini, Gufa Ishtini Katla. Are you saying that even though the Avera person she was a Naira? But since her goof changed by the Hamad of Adin, she's not going to get punished based on when she did Avera. She's going to get punished based on her condition in Besdin. 
And the Gemara asked the Kasha, and they will stop here. It's already 6.51, and the mission will be Mamshech tomorrow, an hour before Mecha. Shkoyach. Yeah. I'm actually going to be doing two hours before Mecha, because Finkel Shir is joining us, and they don't learn today, so I have to catch them up. Not today. Um, a little bit behind. 